In 2002, Canadian businessman Ken Thompson set in motion one of the most significant acts of philanthropy in Canadian history when he agreed to donate his priceless art collection to the Art Gallery of Ontario in Toronto. The collection comprises some 2,000 Canadian and European paintings and objects. From early Christian and medieval works of art and Renaissance sculpture, through Baroque objets d'art, the art of 18th and 19th century England and ship models, to Canadian paintings of the 19th and 20th centuries. With this gift, the most important private art collection in Canada will be housed in a series of magnificent galleries in a transformed AGO designed by the world-renowned architect Frank Gehry. Ken Thompson also contributed over $100 million towards the project, and his generosity has inspired others. A man of passionate commitment and wide-ranging cultural curiosity, everything Ken acquired starting in the 1950s was of the highest quality craftsmanship and spoke directly to him. Now, his collection will speak directly to the world. Uh, I started in a very, very small way uh, in those years, uh, collecting the odd small crake off. They, they were available then for a very small amount of money, and a good thing too, because we didn't have that much money in those days, but enough to get started. But I walked into this antique shop, and uh, they had these two busts, and I picked them in, up and held them in my hands, and I thought, these are magnificent. And you know, they still are, in terms of technology, you know, quality, and uh, you know, excellence of execution, they are superb little objects. My father was an extraordinary man. He made sense of the world through kind of that surface of objects, the touch of people. Um, his collections reflect his journey um, throughout his lifetime, and his collection began in the 50s, the early 50s. His pleasure of an object became the pleasure of so many, which is the most extraordinary, selfless thing you could imagine. Uh, it's the most varied collection to go on show anywhere in the world. What we're moving towards, uh, I would say absolutely clearly, is the most extensive and the most systematic presentation of Canadian painting that there has ever been. If you're interested in Canadian art, you have to come to the AGO. There are going to be uh, almost 130 100, almost 140 uh, Kragoffs in the Thompson galleries here. The most incredible Kragoff experience you could get anywhere in the world. You're going to see fantastic paintings in the same room as fantastic works from the first peoples of this continent. The Dundas mask stands alone with anything. The greatest Greek and Roman antiquities. And when people see that, they get it. And when people see it in this building, they're gonna get it. The Malmesbury Chasse is a fine piece of Limoges enameling. But what's fascinating about it is the quality of the enameling, um, particularly the crucifixion, the figures on each side, and the figure of God the Father above. It will show them the, the fascination of medieval art. It, it will show them the color the three-dimensional quality, the um, spirituality of this um, marvelous period. The ivories are about somebody rather private, rather quiet, uh, who has a kind of intense relationship to the objects and buys things that speak to him directly. Ken Thompson's collection is in a way one of the, the most richly rewarding in terms of viewing because he approached them as a kind of, as an amateur, but an amateur in the sense of a kind of lover of these objects. So uh, he was actually approaching them in a way quite similar to, 
to the approach of the people for whom they were made, I think. Uh, Ken collected ship models, and ship models generally don't find their way into a museum. These were ship models made by craftsmen who are superb craftsmen. And this was one of Ken's passions to uh, collect them. The more I got to know Ken, the more I realized how intrinsic these ship models were to his, uh, his life and his collection, his things that made him happy when he got up in the morning. I should perhaps explain that my father and I had a very special relationship. And we worked increasingly together and shared perceptions. David is uh, an enormous admirer of uh, draftsmanship, of drawing. Uh, and in his liking, his admiration for the Rubens, he could feel absolutely at one with his father. When he first set eyes upon the painting, he came to see me with an image. And he said, oh, Dad, he said, are you prepared? for what I'm about to show you. And whenever he did this, I thought, oh, this is a feast or a famine. When he showed me the image, I realized that this was really a moment that was none of us had been prepared for. Ken came in, it was after hours, there was no one else here, it was nice and quiet. And I remember he hadn't seen the painting since the surface dirt and so on had been removed upstairs in conservation. And he was just struck dumb by it for the first few minutes. He just stared at it. And then he had a big grin on his face and said, well, it really is the best. And it was that sense of um, sculptural power, I think, that really got him. He was always very keen on sculpture and craftsmanship in art. In this particular painting, Rubens has gone out to make a kind of sense of living sculpture. There's almost a palpable physicality. You can grab the limbs and hold them in the painting, and it's the most intense, uh, physically uh, vibrant painting he ever did. As Ken was collecting over the years, I think in him, um, also percolated this, uh, this vision of what to do with this. I think he wanted to share it. He wanted it to be a coherent collection that represented what he and his family had been working on. He believed it was the duty, the responsibility, as well as a, a rewarding business for a Canadian who owned good things to spread the pleasure around. And he'd long wanted to make his collection publicly available. It's an extraordinary gift to the city, to the country. This immediately becomes one of the great art institutions in the world. The saddest thing to imagine is that Ken won't be with us for our opening. I think he was always driven, in my own view, by trying to create, dreaming of creating a space where he could share with others his own engagement with art. When the Transformed Art Gallery of Ontario opens to the public on November 14, 2008, Toronto, and indeed the world, will be able to experience Ken Thompson's unprecedented gift, displayed in Frank Gehry's architectural tribute to a friend and a city. This new AGO is a joining of the Art Museum and the City of Toronto, an open invitation to enter and embark on a memorable journey.